In some sort of crude sense, which no vulgarity, no humor, no overstatement can quite extinguish, the physicists have known sin, and this is a knowledge which they cannot lose. On December 8, 1941, the day after Pearl Harbor, the United States entered World War II by declaring war on Japan. The Axis powers and the Allies raced to develop more and more powerful weapons. Science provided them with an alluring but terrifying goal. In 1938, Fritz Strassmann and Otto Hahn discovered nuclear fission, which involves a chain reaction of splitting atoms and an immense release of energy. Fission suggested the possibility of a new atomic weapon with extraordinary power. In June of 1942, the U.S. government initiated a program called the Manhattan Project to create an atomic bomb. A prominent scientist of the time, J. Robert Oppenheimer, was chosen to direct the project. Robert Oppenheimer exemplified the brilliant opportunities of scientific discovery as a leader of the Manhattan Project. However, his later public dissents regarding nuclear policy expressed regret over his role in creating such destructive weapons. His internal conflict is representative of society's complex relationship with science. Oppenheimer received degrees from Harvard, Göttingen, and Cambridge, where he studied theoretical physics. He later became a professor at UC Berkeley and Caltech. During his early years, Oppenheimer only vaguely followed politics. Exposure to the suffering of the Great Depression led Oppenheimer to adopt a leftist liberal political stance. A girlfriend, Jean Totlock, later his wife, Kitty Harrison, and many of his friends urged Oppenheimer to become involved with the Communist Party. In October 1942, General Leslie Groves chose Oppenheimer to direct the Manhattan Project. While Oppenheimer had done significant research in his career, he felt the Manhattan Project was his opportunity for greatness. Physicist Isidore Rabi remarked that Oppenheimer's appointment was a real stroke of genius on the part of General Groves, who was not generally considered to be a genius. Oppenheimer's selection was controversial. Some scientists questioned Oppenheimer's organizational skills, discipline, and focus. Also, while considering Oppenheimer for the Manhattan Project, the FBI raised suspicions that he was connected to the Soviet Union due to his communist acquaintances. General Groves nonetheless insisted that Oppenheimer's intelligence, rationality, and charisma were indispensable and that he was a real genius. As director, Oppenheimer was diplomatic, respectful, and wholeheartedly devoted to the project. For instance, he suggested that the project be situated in a remote location to keep the scientists isolated, but together and to more easily keep the project secret. He and Groves agreed on desolate Los Alamos, New Mexico. Groves liked Oppenheimer because he was easy to understand and willing to compromise. As said by Roy Glauber, a physicist on the project, Oppenheimer and Groves worked well together. They balanced each other out. While a brilliant physicist, Oppenheimer was also eloquent and clear in his explanations of scientific theory. His scientific attitude complemented Groves' strict military approach. To promote secrecy and security, Groves favored organizing the project into groups of scientists working on specific parts of the bomb. Oppenheimer disagreed, believing that the free exchange of ideas at Los Alamos was vital to the success of the project, because there must be no barriers for freedom of inquiry. There is no place for dogma in science. The scientist is free and must be free to ask any question, to doubt any assertion, to seek for any evidence, to correct any errors. Ben Peterson, a soldier at Los Alamos, admired Oppenheimer's philosophy, remarking that it was unique and important to the success of the project. On July 16, 1945, the plutonium test bomb named Trinity fired. Trinity confirmed the success of Oppenheimer in the Manhattan Project. Certainly, he was pleased that his work succeeded in creating the atomic bomb. His reaction upon witnessing Trinity was relief. He simply said, it worked. Yet he was also deeply discomforted by the bomb's destructive capacity. Trinity represents the end of the Manhattan Project, but it was only the start of Oppenheimer's conflict over his role in the creation of the bomb. On August 6, 1945, President Harry Truman gave orders to drop an atomic bomb in Hiroshima, Japan. Three days later, a second dropped on Nagasaki. Approximately 105,000 people were killed immediately, and countless more from the later effects of radiation. The bombs shocked Japan into surrender, and World War II, the most destructive war in history, finally ended. Oppenheimer became an instant hero in the United States, earning the title of father of the atomic bomb. While the bombs brought about a quick end to the war, they also annihilated two entire cities. Throughout the project, Oppenheimer exhibited a single-mindedness in creating a successful weapon. He and many of the scientists at Los Alamos had seen the project as necessary to win the race against Germany to develop the atomic bomb. According to Glauber, they were working hard out of fear of the Germans. 
With Germany already defeated, using the bomb against Japan seemed to them unjustified. After the war, he became more ambivalent about the project. He and the bomb significantly contributed to a new age in warfare, political methods, foreign affairs, and the balance of power. Oppenheimer did not regret serving his country. He said, My role was to preside over an effort to make, as soon as possible, something practical, but I would do it again. Yet he also stated that after Trinity, he knew he was partially responsible for creating a new age of enormous destructive capability. As with some modern scientific advances, the dangerous implications of this creation truly became real only after it had been used. He was horrified to see the death and destruction the bomb had caused in Japan, and worried about the bomb's impact on civilization. He knew the world would not be the same. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that, one way or another. Oppenheimer's post-war career of politics and court hearings was filled with controversy. Oppenheimer's conflict over the morality of the atomic bomb led him to firmly oppose further nuclear development in the United States. After the war, Congress established a General Advisory Committee of the Atomic Energy Commission to promote and control peacetime development of atomic science. Oppenheimer was chosen to chair the GAC, and he used his influence to oppose further nuclear weapons development. He discouraged the U.S. from participating in the intensifying arms race, and opposed and temporarily slowed the creation of the hydrogen bomb. In October of 1949, in a report by the General Advisory Committee, Oppenheimer and fellow members stated, We believe a superbomb should never be produced. Mankind would be far better off not to have a demonstration of the feasibility of such a weapon. He and his colleagues believed the hydrogen bomb to be a weapon of genocide, according to historian Martin Sherwin. Long after the war, Oppenheimer's detractors accused him of being a security threat due to his alleged affiliations with communism and the Soviet Union. During the Red Scare in 1954, President Eisenhower revoked his security clearance and the AEC held a hearing to consider reinstatement of Oppenheimer's clearance. While Henry Smythe, commissioner of the AEC, stated, I prefer the positive statement that Dr. Oppenheimer's further employment will continue to strengthen the United States. Others, including Louis Strauss and Edward Teller, opposed Oppenheimer. Historian Alan Carr said, I doubt Strauss thought Oppenheimer was a spy, but Oppenheimer had publicly and unnecessarily humiliated Strauss before Congress, and Strauss wanted to return the favor. The AEC voted against Oppenheimer's reinstatement despite having no evidence of any danger in his communist relations. This hearing ruined Oppenheimer. After the trial, his career was over. Oppenheimer expressed moral conflict over his role in creating a terrifyingly destructive weapon. Naturally, he was proud to serve his country and help end the war, but his efforts had grave consequences. The atomic bomb not only caused countless casualties, but led to the hydrogen bomb, nuclear warfare, and nuclear proliferation. It put in question the future of human civilization. Feeling responsible, Oppenheimer tried to control and limit nuclear development but his efforts were ineffective. Oppenheimer's conflict illustrates society's conflict with science. The progressive nature of science is often inconsistent with society's traditional values or creates other unintended problems. In the 1940s, creating atomic weapons to end a horribly destructive war seemed justified, but controversy ensued over their continued use. Today, stem cell research, cloning, and genetically modified crops create new challenges and risks. Oppenheimer and his personal struggles are precursors to these modern conflicts. Biological advances in stem cells and cloning are meant to improve human lives, yet they may be extremely dangerous. Chairman of the Union of Concerned Scientists Kurt Gottfried says that because biological materials are more readily available than nuclear materials, biological technology is a bigger societal problem than nuclear energy. The potential for genetically altering and modifying humans is very dangerous. Oppenheimer's actions in directing the Manhattan Project and later protesting nuclear development demonstrate his significant conflict over the atomic bomb. His struggle over the morality and the ethics of the bomb is representative of society's complex relationship with scientific advancement. While scientific progress continues at an ever more rapid pace, often society and scientists themselves are conflicted over the ethical and moral issues of such research. Oppenheimer's life shows that scientific advancement often raises sharp ethical and moral debates within society. His legacy is the essential struggle of society with the ethical and moral implications of scientific advancement. <laughs>